Hey guys, this is another example of a really typical question that comes up in uh, certainly the past exam papers, but I'm sure you'll probably see some variants of it on your online assessment as well. So you will really commonly see diagrams or schemes like this where you have some reagents, some starting materials, missing boxes for the products, uh, missing reagents and things like that. And you'll be asked to fill in each of the steps. So usually what will happen is you'll have to predict the products of some reactions, predict the starting materials of some reactions, predict the reagents of reactions, and then also be able to draw a few curly arrow mechanisms for one or more of the steps. So it's absolutely essential that you go back through the videos on functional group properties, because in each of those videos, I usually cover the main um, reactions that each functional group can undergo. OK, so first, we're just going to start with this question, which is draw the missing organic starting material, starting materials and products one, two, three and four. OK, so the first one I hope is quite easy. So lithium aluminium hydride is a source of H minus. OK, so if you have H minus, it will attack this carbonyl. So you'll end up with another hydrogen at the bottom here, and then you have to break this pi bond and it will pick up a H plus from H3O plus. So the product of this reaction is a secondary alcohol. Sorry, a primary alcohol. That's my mistake. Okay, so there's two hydrogens. Because it was an aldehyde, you added another hydrogen, so you end up with two hydrogens in your product. So that's number one. So product two is the reaction between a carboxylic acid and compound number one with an acid source, okay, so with a proton source. So hopefully you should know that when you react an alcohol with an acid, you form an ester. So I'm going to have to draw it small because I uh, made this box a little bit too small. So what's really important, because it happens a lot, is that you count the number of carbons, okay? So a lot of people will draw a product where there's a two carbons there. But if you pay attention, you have one carbon, two carbon, three carbons. OK, so one, two, three. And then you have your isopropyl group. So it's just really important when you're forming esters, particularly because the fact that the way I've drawn this, you have to flip that molecule over to show where the oxygen is coming in. OK, so because it takes a slightly different appearance than the way it's drawn here, it's essential to count all of the carbons. So for here, you had one, two, three, four carbons, one, two, three, four carbons. In this one, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. OK, so that's just really important. It's it's unbelievable how many people will make that mistake and they'll lose a significant number of the marks because you've drawn the product wrong. OK, then for the one down the bottom. So this reaction here is forming an acid chloride from a carboxylic acid. And when you react that with ammonia, so this would normally be in excess. OK, you will form an amide. OK, so the lone pair of that nitrogen will come in here attack that carbonyl, you'll form your tetrahedral intermediate, which will collapse back down and you'll kick out your chlorine. OK, so the product of this reaction is an amide. So NH2 and you will lose a proton because ultimately you will actually form NH3 plus first because it'll be attached to this carbon and then you lose one of the hydrogens and that's the final product. OK, so then the last one is kind of convergent. So if you treat either the ester or the amide with acid, you'll end up with the same product. OK, so what's happening here is you're getting hydrolysis. So you have OH coming in and attacking. OK, and that's the same in both cases. OK, so overall, that's what hap that is what's happening here. So both will give you the carboxylic acid. OK, so it's very, very important to be comfortable with these types of schemes. OK, so there's definitely tons of examples online and especially in your past papers. So I can't recommend enough. Just do all of them, OK, because they will cover all of the different reactions you will need to be aware of in the exam, such as forming amides and esters, hydrolyzing them, whether that be acidic or basic conditions, oxidations of um, alcohols and aldehydes, reductions of various carbonyl containing functional groups, it's really important to practice all of these. OK, there's I'm pretty sure it's nearly always unavoidable. You will always have to answer something similar to this, uh, certainly in the case of the old exams. So 
The next part then is give a curly arrow reaction mechanism to account for the formation of one. So it's asking you for a reaction mechanism for the reduction of your aldehyde to your alcohol. So this is your aldehyde here. So I'm just going to redraw it down the bottom just so I don't have to keep on pushing it up. So as I said, lithium aluminium hydride is a source of H minus. So for the purposes of your curly arrow mechanism, you can just write H minus. So, or alternatively, and just to be clear, what you can also do is you have aluminium with four hydrogens attached to it. Okay, aluminium only wants to have three bonds normally, so it's actually negatively charged. So what will happen is the electrons in the aluminium hydrogen bond will it come over here and attack this carbonyl, taking the hydrogen with it. Okay, so it's really, really important for this mechanism. If you're going to draw out the aluminium hydride, the arrow has to start at the bond. Okay, it does not start from the negative charge. That's really, really important. So when you do that, as always, you cannot have four bonds to carbon. So you have to break the weakest bond, which is the pi bond. So the electrons in that will go back up onto the oxygen. So now what you have is O minus H, H, your bright product is ALH3. So now it's no longer charged because it's lost the electrons that it was sharing. And then what will happen is, so when you form this tetrahedral intermediate, what you do is you work it up with acid. Okay, so H3O plus. Okay, so another way to draw H3O plus is like this. So with all of the hydrogen sticking out from the uh, water molecule and the negative ox the negative charge on this oxygen will come around and attack one of those protons and then the bonds, the electrons in this bond will go back up onto the oxygen. So now you form your OH and you have your two hydrogens and then you have H2O is what you get after you deprotonate the water molecule. Okay, so that's the curly arrow mechanism for the formation of alcohol one. And it's a really common one that's asked. And it's the exact same reaction as if it was sodium borohydride. So sodium borohydride is NaBH4. And it's the same again. So you have your boron with four hydrogens stuck onto it with a negative charge on your boron. And it's the electrons in the boron hydrogen bond that go and do the attacking. Okay, not the negative charge. So then the next question is identify reagents required for step one. Okay, so step one is the oxidation of an aldehyde to a carboxylic acid. There's a load of different reagents you could choose. So I've just written some out here. So you can use chromium reagents, potassium permanganate, silver oxide. There's a load of different oxidizing reagents out there. So I would advise you to just make sure you look at all the ones that are in your lecture notes and be aware of all of them because there, you might get a question, for example, where you're not asked for the reagents, the reagents are provided for you, but you have to identify the product. So you definitely want to be familiar with all of the oxidizing agents that you see in the in the module. OK, so this last question then is slightly taking a different turn. So predict with reasoning which of the compounds five to seven react most quickly with nucleophiles. OK, so this is covered in detail in the videos on esters, amides, carboxylic acids. OK, so if you want a bit more detail, go and talk to those. Sorry, not go and talk to those. Go and watch those videos. But I'll also give the answer here. So basically, in terms of the final answer, OK, so seven is fastest. Then five and then six, okay? And the reason for that comes down to resonance, okay? So what can happen is, as you know, this nitrogen's lone pair can come in up here and then you get this resonance form. So the resonance form of six is this. So O minus, you've got positive charge in your nitrogen. OK, so that means overall this carbon kind of has a double bond to the oxygen and kind of has a double bond to the nitrogen. But overall, what this means 
is that your carbon of your carbonyl has a lot more electron density than a typical carbonyl in an amide. Okay, so amides have a lot more electron density on that carbon than, for example, carboxylic acids or aldehydes or any other carbonyl containing functional group. And because of that, what it means is that the partial positive and partial negative charges aren't quite as big as you normally would see for carbonyls. So your oxygen is slightly negative and then your carbon is only slightly positively charged because it has that extra electron richness that is coming from this nitrogen that is coming from this nitrogen donating its lone pairs in. Now, of course, esters can do the same thing. Okay, so that oxygen can donate in its electrons. So then what you end up with is O minus, that oxygen has a double bond. However, in the case of esters, as you know, oxygen is very electronegative. It's more so electronegative than nitrogen is. So nitrogen doesn't really mind being N plus, but oxygen is very unhappy to be N plus. So that means that its resonance form isn't quite as strong as it is in amides. So an ester will spend most of its time in this form and only a very, very small amount of time in this form. So while the resonance increases the electron richness of this carbon, it doesn't affect it as much as it does in the case of an amide. Then when you look at an aldehyde, hydrogen does not have a lone pair, so there is no resonance at all. So that means in the case of an aldehyde, that carbon is very, it is very um, electrophilic, sorry. So it really wants to have something that's negatively charged, so some kind of electrophile to come in and attack it, okay? So the resonance structures of amides and esters make them less reactive to nucleophiles than aldehydes. However, the electronegativity of oxygen make them a little bit more electrophilic than an amide is. Okay, so that's the very strong and clear description of the answer to that. So I would expect that for full marks in a question like that, what you'd want to do is you have to number the compounds, or sorry, list the compounds in order of reactivity. So because this is the most electrophilic, it's going to be the most reactive. And then you just explain that amides have a lot of resonance because nitrogen is not as electronegative as oxygen and therefore is less reactive. OK, so hopefully that's clear enough. If not, just revisit the videos on the reactivity of amides and esters and why this is important, for example, is the fact that if you treat all three of these with sodium borohydride, the aldehyde is the only one that will react. OK, because sodium borohydride is a weak nucleophile. It's not that strong. If you wanted to reduce your ester or your amide, you would have to use lithium aluminium hydride, which is a very strong reagent. OK, so this just exemplifies the fact that amides and esters are not very electrophilic because of the fact that they have this resonance going on, which donates electron density to the carbon. So. I think that may be the last video I have time for today because I think I've probably spent about three or four hours making them now. Um, again, if you have any specific questions you'd like me to address, feel free to email me or comment on the videos and I'll get back to you really quickly. Um, and also, please do not forget that all these videos are being made to raise money for Cystic Fibrosis Ireland. So if you haven't donated already, please do check out the GoFundMe page, which is linked in the description below. Thanks, guys.